Okay, so I just wanted to take a minute and make sure that you really understand what the null and alternative look like for the chi-square test of homogeneity. All right, so the null and alternative for our restaurant example was it's always, the null is always going to be, there's no difference, and then you're going to use the word distribution. So there's no difference in the distribution because that's what we're comparing, distribution among different populations. The alternative is that there is a difference among the distribution. So we're not saying that all of the distributions are different. Two of them could be the same. As long as one is different, one of the distributions is different is the alternative. So that's what it means when it says the alternative is many-sided. So that's like saying, okay, since we can say there is any difference, it could be one that's too high, one that's too low, one that could look the same, many-sided, so any portion of the distributions would be different. Okay, so it's kind of, it's not necessarily one side or two sided, it's many sided. Now, how can we compare distributions of a categorical variable? The problem of how to do many comparisons at once with an overall measure of confidence in all of our conclusions is common in statistics. So there's a problem when you have multiple comparisons. So there are a couple methods for dealing with multiple comparisons that usually have two parts. Number one is we take a look at an overall test to see if there's good evidence of any differences among the parameters. So this is where we're gonna use our chi-square test because we're checking to see the differences among many distributions or proportions. And then the important thing is, is after we do this, is to do a detailed follow-up analysis to decide which part of the distributions differ and how large the differences are. So remember with our chi-square goodness of fit test, we took a look and we said, which part contributed most to the chi-square statistic? So which one is going to give us the largest difference, which one is the furthest away from the expected value of what we should be getting. And you always want to do a follow-up analysis whenever you reject the null hypothesis. So we're going to be using a test. The overall test uses your chi-square statistic in distributions. The Chi-score test for homogeneity is always going to have the same null and alternative hypothesis. Make sure that you're putting it in context based on the question that you have. So the null is that there's no difference, keyword no difference, in the distribution, keyword, of your categorical variable for several populations or treatments. Now also keep in mind, you can have five treatments on the same population and that's gonna be kinda of considered different populations because they're different treatments. Okay, so just make sure that that's in context. The alternative is, is that there is a difference in the distribution of the categorical variable for several populations. So all that's saying is one portion of the expected counts or the observed counts is different than the expected counts. How are we gonna do this? The same way we did your chi-score goodness of fit test. We compare the observed counts in a two-way table with the expected counts if the distributions were all going to be exactly the same. Basically, we're looking the, at the observed counts in the table to the expected counts. What we need to do next is to figure out how we're going to get the expected counts for our two-way table. Let's take a look and see how we can find our expected counts. Let's consider the expected count of the French entrees purchased when no music was playing. How are we going to figure out how to get what that expected counts are if all we have is a two-way table? So your expected counts come from a couple of different pieces of the table. Now it's going to be very important that you find the row totals and the column totals in order to answer this question. The values in the calculation are, we're going to be looking at the row total right here, also the column total, and the table total. Okay, so how are we going to get the expected counts? The expected counts turned out to be 34.22, but where did that number come from? That number came from taking the row total times the column total, divided by the total of the table, and that's going to give you 34.22. So once again, you're just gonna take the row total 
times the column total and divide by the total of the table. So that's why it's really important to make sure that you always, always, always are going to find those totals in your table. And if it's helpful to kind of draw a T, go for it, and then say, okay, row total, column total times row total, all divided by what's left, or that 243. Okay, so here's how you find the expected counts. When your knowledge is true, the expected counts for any cell in a two-way table is going to be the row total times the column total all divided by the table total. So this is how you would calculate every single entry in your table. You'll need to basically create an entire new matrix or an entire new table for your expected values. And remember, never, ever, ever round your expected counts because it's an average of the number of counts if you were repeating the process over and over and over again. So it's an average. And remember, if you round, then the totals will not add up to be the same. So the row totals and the column totals in your new matrix or your new table have to be the same as your observed values. Make sure that you show your expected counts. You must show them in order to earn credit. Do not just find them on the calculator and state that the counts are bigger than five. So in every single one of these questions, you will have two tables, one with your observed counts, one with your expected counts. Keep in mind, this formula right here for your expected counts, this is not going to be on your AP Statistics formula sheet. So you are going to have to remember this, although I will show you later on how you can get this from your graphing calculator. What I want you to notice here is that a chi-score test for homogeneity is basically the exact same type of test as a chi-score test for goodness of fit. The expected counts are just coming from your two-way table rather than multiplying the proportion by the total. So actually, the only difference here that you're learning in this section is your new null and alternative hypothesis and then understanding how to find your expected counts. So just as we did with the chi-square goodness of fit test, we're going to compare the observed counts to the expected counts using this formula. So it's the exact same formula that we talked about in the previous section. None of the portions are new for this formula. We're going to be comparing the observed counts minus the expected counts, squaring it, and then dividing it by the expected counts. So that's why it's important to have that table. Your calculator will do all of the work for you. You will just remember you'll have to show two of these pieces plugged in in order to earn full credit. So now let's take a look at the problem that we've been looking at. Here's my observed counts, here's my expected counts. Notice the totals are still the same. And keep in mind, if you had rounded this to 34 or to 31 or to 34, that total is not necessarily going to add up to 99. So it's important that you keep those decimals. And you can always just check by adding your rows and your columns to make sure that you have the same totals as your observed counts. Okay, this time the sum is over all of the cells, not including the tables in the two-way table. Remember, it's the measure of the difference between the observed and the expected totals. Now, what this is saying is the sum of over all the cells. That's just saying this is the observed for this one. Here's your expected. Observed minus expected divided by your expected. So here, here's your observed. Here's your expected. Observed minus your expected squared, all divided by the expected. Now this formula is on the AP exam formula sheet. It's the same as the chi-square goodness of fit test. Okay, so let's just take a look at what it would look like if we were going to find the chi-square statistic for one of the cells. And one of the cells, I just mean one of the entries. So let's take a look at this French right here, the number of entrees ordered when no music was playing. So my observed in this case was 30. My expected in this case was 34. We're going to square that, divide by the expected count, and here's my chi-square statistic for that cell. Now that's actually not too bad. So that's kind of like saying, all right, my observed and my expected were not too far off. Now if I were to do that for every single one of them, okay, and by every single one of them, it would mean each of all of these entries, not including the totals, there'd be a total of nine, okay? We end up getting a chi-square statistic of 18.28. That's a pretty big number, okay? And like I said, remember, your calculator's gonna do all this for you. You just have to show two plugins. So maybe the first two, or often the first and the last one. 
So let's take a look at what that conclusion means. So earlier we stated with the test of significance that there was no difference in the true distribution of entrees ordered when you were playing no music, French accordion music, or Italian string music. Our alternative said, hey, there is in fact a difference whenever we're playing the different types of music. So we already checked all the conditions are met and our calculated statistic is 18.28. What does that p-value work? So how are we going to find the p-value? So remember our p-value is the probability that that occurs given that there's no difference in the distributions. But with our chi-score statistic, we need to find the degrees of freedom. It was easy with the goodness of fit test because we only had one row. So all we did was take the number of columns or the number of categories minus one. In this case, the degrees of freedom, since we have rows and columns, we have to multiply them together. So you're still gonna take your number of rows minus one, the number of columns minus one, and multiply those together. Just make sure that you're not including your totals in the number of rows and columns. So let's take a minute and use our table to find our p-value and then use our chi-squared CDF command in order to find the p-value. Now, let's take a look at the two-way table. It had three rows and three columns, so we just subtracted one from each. We got two times two was four. So right there, I know my degree of freedom in this case is going to be four. Make sure you state the degrees of freedom. So then what you're going to do is go to your table. You're going to look for the degrees of freedom is four. Look for your chi-square statistic, okay? It was somewhere between these two numbers right here. Remember our chi-square statistic was 18.28. Okay, I'm gonna write that down right here, sorry. And that is going to be between 16.42 and 18.47. So our p-value, or the probability that that's occurring, is going to be between these two numbers. Now, if you don't want to estimate it, I would highly suggest that you use your graphing calculator. So because we can't say exactly what the p-value is here, we can just say it's between those two numbers. On the graphing calculator, here's what it would look like. Remember your chi-score distribution is always skewed to the right. So here is our 18.28, okay? And remember, you're always going to find the area above. So when I plug this into my calculator, here's your lower bound, 18.28, a thousand or whatever big number because I'm going up to infinity, I'm calculating the area up to infinity, so I just did a thousand. Make sure you state your degrees of freedom, and that's gonna give you 0 0.0011. So that p-value is pretty low. So just remember, make sure not to use calculator speak on the AP exam. Make sure that you're stating, including that chi-squared is greater than 18.28, and then giving your answer of your p-value. All right, so now exactly, what exactly does that mean? Let's interpret the p-value, and this interpretation always needs to be in your conclusion. Remember, it always states assuming the null is true. So assuming there's no difference in the true distribution of entrees ordered in this restaurant when no music, French accordion music, or Italian string music is playing, there is a 0 .0011 probability of observing a difference in the distributions of entrees ordered of the three treatment groups as large or larger than the ones in the study, or you can just say as extreme as ours. So what conclusion would we draw? So this is a pretty low p-value. So since our p-value is less than 0 0.05, and remember if your alpha is not given in the question, you're always going to just assume it's 0 0.05, Okay, we have convincing evidence that there is a difference in the distribution. Okay, and make sure that you're including this interpretation of the p-value in your conclusion. I don't have it here because I have it previously stated above. Now, for your calculator, you can do this on your graphing calculator. There is a video on how to do this on your graphing calculator in the notes. Okay, go to the calculator section, or you can take a look right here, and this will explain to you how to get your, your expected counts from your graphing calculator 
and how to get your chi-square statistic. Also just notice here, we're not using the chi-square goodness of fit test here. We're using the chi-square test in order to get the answer.